today's encyclical is a little different than what I typically upload on Saturday. I'm not uploading this to make any claims about the state of the church or potential violations of long-standing canon law. The encyclical today is one that had never been translated into English fully as far as I am aware, at least until a subscriber of mine provided me a link that they, to something that, that they had translated themselves. So I want to thank Mr. David Rudman, who runs WriteLatin.org, which looks like a great website that any Catholic wanting to really understand our roots should have a look at. A link to the text of this is found in the pinned comment on YouTube and on the Sources blog for those of you who are not uh, hearing this through YouTube. At the end, you'll notice that the final paragraph is mostly etc. statements, and another subscriber pointed me to an encyclical I actually recorded and uploaded almost a year ago that is very similar to this one that has a similar full statement at the end, as if that paragraph was almost a formulaic type of uh, statement for, de well, declaring something to be anathema, and I'll be quoting from that one. Now that may be an error, and if it is, feel free to let me know. Also, if this papal bull has been formally rescinded or repealed canonically, let me know and provide a link. Anyway, today's encyclical is Post Quam Verus, the Cardinals of the Holy Roman Church, Constitution of Sixtus V, as of December 3rd, 1586. Translated by David Rudman on the 27th of September, 2019. About the superiority, number, order, age, and qualities of the cardinals to be created of the Holy Roman Church, and about the choice of six cathedral churches which are conferred upon the cardinals. Sixtus, the bishop, the servant of the servants of God, writes this to be remembered. After that true eternal pastor and bishop of the souls, Christ our Lord, for governing the universal church, which by his precious blood he had acquired, he handed over the plenitude of both heavenly and earthly power to blessed Peter, the prince of the apostles, and to him committed its alterations in earthly matters, just as the successor on the seat of the same Peter and the true vicar of Christ, the Roman pontiff, by divine preordinance, holds the highest place of the same supreme apostolic dignity and a place in earthly matters, so also the cardinals of the Holy Roman Catholic Church representing the persons of the Holy Apostles insofar as they or I would minister to Christ the Savior, preaching the kingdom of God and working the mystery for human salvation, and as counselors and coagitators they assist to the same pontiff in the exercise of this sacerdotal office and in and in the Catholic Church to be directed, over which he is preeminent, just as if eyes and ears, and as the noblest parts of the Holy Head, and as that one's chief members, ordered and constituted by the Holy Spirit, who by divine disposition in this same ecclesiastical hierarchy, as an image of that celestial one to which it corresponds, and as born aloft to the highest rank with the same Roman pontiff, the common pastor and father, unto whom the faithful, out of all the nations and peoples, from all sides, of all kinds, of all orders, the highest, the lowest, co-breathe. In the most dire and greatest and most arduous things, they would sustain the mass and burden of such a great weight of the peoples, and for the salvation of souls, for faith, for justice, for unity, they would assiduously watch over and labor, so that in regard to the same, they may apply themselves by serving the universal church and the conveniences of the individual churches. To their council, the same pontiff may distribute things to be done. By their works and needs, and especially fruit, he may able to be to the universal Christian Republic Commonwealth as an ornament and pleasure in favorable times, and as a garden helpful in doubtful ones. Finally, so that for the exaltation of the Catholic religion, for the Christian people's peace and tranquility, for the increase in honor of the Holy See, they may constantly pour out spirit and blood if thus it may be called for. The Office of the Cardinal And so, whereas they truly are cardinals, and the brightest lights of the church, and foundations of the temple of God, and buttresses, and columns of the Christian commonwealth, they ought to abound with a singular, certain kind of piety and teaching, and not just vulgar or mediocre virtue, but with a distinguished and extraordinary virtue. And as they are chief parts of the highest Roman prelature, in order that they may be held worthy of this greater honor, it is necessary to apply exquisite diligence and to foresee with accurate circumspection in those to be received into the college that they that there may be taken only excellent and choicest men, and that they there may be a consultation in regard to this matter 
chiefest for the necessity and utility of the whole church committed to them, so that also prelates and other ecclesiastical persons promoted to the sublimity of so great a dignity may shine by the praise of their previous life, and by a certain excellence, and by the esteemed approval of their merits, in the sight of others. Indeed, their life and habits ought to be as an example for others. Their words and responses like oracles, their warnings and injunctions ought to be thought of by all Christians as rules and norms of rightly living and rightly thinking. From them, as if from the wisest teachers, a form of ecclesiastical discipline is to be received, which may be diffusely propagated far and wide for confirming the customs and life of all the faithful. Finally, they themselves truly are the salt of the earth and lamps upon, placed upon a stand, that they may discern between blood and blood, cause and cause, leper and leper, and by the opportunity of teaching, and by truth, they may confirm the infirm, solidify the unsolid, convert the depraved, that they may shine to all those who dwell in the house of the Lord. And for this primary sea, assisting all pastors when they consult that same sea in weightier matters, or implore its riches, that they may not cease to instruct, direct, and teach with their judgment, counsel, and authority. One other thing, since not only unto them many things pertain, but also matters of greatest importance, let them not cease to know with clearest faith and prudence the causes which for days are committed to them, and to perform as legates in provinces to be governed, and in weightier things, and rather frequently to kings and emperors. Supernatural Needs for Such a College but because there is a highest head to be taken out of the body, number and college of all of them, who is to be established over all pastors, and is going to have the care of the whole flock of Christ, let that one himself, the highest pontiff, be chosen, and let the same ones create that one by their votes, so that then at last the best one without any doubt may exist for the public good of the Christian people, if out of the number and votes of good ones he will be chosen in this holy election, then they are to be thought of as a true interpreters and intermessengers of the will of God. Just as by his spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and is ruled, so also maximally the whole work of an election of this sort, by the inspiration and impulse of the same one, is most certainly to be carried out and made known to all, so that from this very thing at least it may be perceived with great sincerity and purity, is required among them, from every aff affectation of the flesh, and foreign care of private conveniences, and endeavors of factions, they whose breasts and utterances may be future temples and organs of the Holy Spirit, and out of whose members, as it were, like seeds, that one man may be going to be produced, upon whom the, whole, the, whom the fullness of the entire apostolic power, with God consenting, meritoriously may be conferred. General number Reasons for this Decree on account of which let the fullness of so great an office be honored with that observance and admiration which is fitting among all mortals, and to unto which degrees, on account of their excellence, the eyes of all, the faces of all, are turned. In them let there shine a brightness and splendor equal to their highest dignity, and in them let God be glorified, let the sacerdotal ministry be honored, and let the souls of the faithful be gladdened. Finally, they certainly are seen to be decorated with the sacred, most generous insignia of this honor, who may have been illust illustrated with exceptional erudition, innocence, and sanctity, and with every class of virtues, from the true bestower upon others of solid goods, God. Consequently, we, after it pleased to the divine goodness to call our feebleness to the apex of that highest up apostleship, among other cares and thoughts, which day and night we have undertaken for the good of the universal church. In these exceptionally turbulent times, we have judged this very one most worthy of our pontifical solicitude, that for the common salvation and proficiency of the Christian people, entrusted to our care and for the honor and ornament of the same holy Roman church, regarding the election and choosing of cardinals, as much from our predecessors as from us, that we would weigh the decrees and sanctions so far published, in which, although they may have been ordained and disposed completely, prudently, and healthily, yet, however, because human matters easily will slip into worser state, unless there may be one who may assiduously renew and preserve them. Therefore, those same sanctions and decrees now held, partly by renovating, partly by declaring, partly by filling them in, and by reforming them for the better, for the demands of times and matters, 
by mature deliberation with these our venerable brothers, the cardinals of the Holy Roman Church, about the counsel of those same brothers, and by unanimous consent, we have led forth this our perpetually to be valid constitution to be promulgated, by which we admonish even our very selves in so grave a matter of our office, and which we have imposed as a law upon ourselves, and indicate the same to our successors, whom we trust will not be forgetful of their duty, and to be going to render an accounting of their stewardship, sooner or later, in a strict and to be feared judgment of God, with the apostle saying, We will all stand before the tribunal of Christ, and each and every one of us will render to God an accounting of himself. Total number of members. Firstly, therefore, since thus at the demands of times, both in quality and on occasion, there may have been a departure from that old custom of ascribing up to a certain number, few men into the sacred college, and now there are more cardinals in our age than were accustomed to be elected into the same college of antiquity, then also so that according to the decree of the general council of Trent, some account may be had of all the nations of Christianity. Then also because in the same council, many weighed down frequently by old age or illnesses, which is the weakness of the human body, are not able to conveniently to suffice for so great a burden to be continuously undertaken, so that in this matter a congruent moderation may be applied, certain limits may be prescribed, and lest we should drive them back to that ancient scarcity of material in this matter, or should cheapen the honor of the matter of them, with too numerous and superfluous a number, we intermittently, we ourselves saw and experienced, when we were in the lower offices, and so that the figure of the old synagogue may represent respond to the truth of the holy and apostolic church, we wishing to follow the command of the Lord made unto Moses about seventy men to be gathered from amongst the elders of Israel, whom he had known to be the people's old men and teachers, so that they might bear with him the burden of the people, and so that he himself would not be weighed down alone, and upon whom, having been led to the door of the tabernacle, the Spirit rested, with the Lord speaking. About the counsel of our brother preachers, we perpetually establish and ordain that into the hereafter, with a, with a numbered all the episcopal, sacerdotal, and diaconal cardinals of whatsoever order, who now are and who will be created in the future, that altogether shall at no time ever exceed the number of seventy, and such number shall not be increased for any pretext, occasion, or cause, even most urgent, that if it will have happened that one or more than one by us or by the Roman pontiff existing at that time in the future, either to be chosen or to be pronounced as a cardinal, we decree that an election, creation, and pronouncement of this type to be going to be null, bankrupt, and void, and to be thought to be, and that no right is acquired thus by the chosen one or ones, whether the title is in reality or in name only, neither that any one of them is to be held for a cardinal, or to be able for owing to be reputed as a cardinal, nor that the stated election, creation, and pronouncement from the beginning to be valid, and made beyond the number, if afterwards, with one or more cardinals dying, to the prescribed number, the same college may be returned, and on account of which things, retroactively to make good, but as from the beginning, thus from them onward perpetually it, the decree, to be of no assistance or importance. Numbers of each rank. Since indeed, now then, from the earliest times, even for the apostles, the order of deacons is recognized as having been instituted unto serving and ministering in the church, by the great providence of God, and by the variation of times, was accustomed to be a number now more, now less, thus so that the deacons were sometimes seven, now again fourteen, and occasionally indeed ten and eight. Yet, however, at this time, on account of the small number of them, then also on account of the absence of them from the Roman Curia, so greatly few are found, so that they are not able to fulfill their office but rather more frequently presbyterial cardinals are forced to minister and assist in the place of deacons, against the instructions of the fathers and of the pope. With regard to which we establish that from the aforesaid number of cardinals, fourteen deacons, and all the rest, besides the six bishops, may be presbyters, and ought to be. Age and Holy Order's Requirement Neither after this any one to be able to be assumed into a cardinal deacon, unless he will have con constituted in at least the twentieth year of his age, that so that completely within a year he may attain to the holy order of the diaconate, and ought to be promoted. Otherwise, if with a year elapsed to the sacred order of the diaconate, he will have not been promoted, that by that very thing, not only in cons consistorial matters, 
but in all other acts and businesses of cardinals he may exist deprived, and that may lack from active and passive voice in an election, which also is, according to the Constitution published by our predecessor, Pope Pius IV of blessed memory, regarding the reformation of the conclave. Retention of some of the diaconal rank. But let the number of deacons, thus predefined by perpetually ret retained, and let the deacons always remain in the same order, and if any one of them, out of the fervor of devotion, will have been promoted to the order of the presby presbyterate, that however always in the same order of the diaconate, they may always officially minister, and may hold their place among the cardinal deacons, until from cardinals newly be to be created or chosen, other deacons may complete the aforesaid number, and into their place may be sub subrogated and substituted, and in which case the older deacons promoted to the order of the presbyterate are able to transition into cardinal presbyters, and among them to sit and be co-numbered. Succession of Cathedral Churches and Cardinal Episcopates As truly we follow the cardinal deacons with greater honors, who in their vocation will have remained, and in the ministry of their order will have preserved, we will in that when some transfer through death of the thing, of that church, out of the six cathedral churches, when the cardinal bishops preside over the first, second, and third, will have happened, or at other times, when it will have happened to the vacant for be vacant for a time, that the senior, indeed, cardinal presbyter present, but with the preserved right of each cardinal bishop of transferring to it, with the prior church dismissed over which he was in charge, as if of custom, he may be promoted, but when after three vacancies, three in the same way out of the cardinal presbyters, will have been established into bishops, then if a fourth vacancy of any one of these churches will have happened, then with the older presbyter excluded, only by that turn of events, the prior of the cardinal deacons, who will have been present and at legitimate age con constituted, if that one will not have wanted the matter, or will not have been able to assume it, then the following deacon endowed with the same qualities may be promoted to it. And so from then on, in vacancies of this sort, six of the aforesaid churches will be perpetually observed, so that after three promotions of presbyters to the aforesaid churches, with a fourth vacancy occurring, the first of the deacons, or the following one, as is preferred, may be perfected into a bishop. Multiplicity of Talents Among the seventy cardinals, besides those outstanding of either right, whether doctors of laws, let there not be lacking several men to be taken, distinguished in sacred theology as teachers, especially out of the regulars and orders of the mendicants, at least four, but no fewer. Time of Consistory Innovating the ancient custom, truly, of Clement, Anacletus, Averestus, Alexander, and of our other predecessors of the Holy Pontificate, through 600-plus years, wishing to follow in a continued series the observance and decree, innovating what was published otherwise through us in our consistory, perpetually we sanction the time of creating cardinals, or of their promotion to be made to the honor of cardinalship, to be only to be in the month of December, provided that it is in very times or days of fastings, and not at other times. International Character But in order that the same cardinals in the regime of the universal church may be able to be usefully assist us or the, and, or the temporally existing Roman pontiff, and so that upon the occasion of transpiring events a certain knowledge from them may be readily and faithfully had about all customs, matters, and businesses of the Christian kingdoms and provinces, adhering to the decree of the aforesaid Tridentine Council, we establish that from all the nations of Christianity, as conveniently as it can come about, suitable ones, cardinals, may be taken. Of legitimate birth. Besides these things, let they who are going to be created cardinals, having arisen by legitimate and honest births, neither indeed with any blemish or any at all suspicion of any sort of illegitimate births, but let them lack from every stain and impurity, Otherwise, let them be thought to be completely unable of rising to so eminent a grade of dignity, and incapable of it, considering the same topic, that although there may be so great a, f a force and efficacy of the sacrament of matrimony, that when the apostles as witness, great is the mystery in Christ and in the church, that they who beforehand may have been forgotten, begotten from an unbound man and an unbound woman, between whom a matrimony was able to rightly occur, after the contract are held to be legitimate children, but however, in some provinces and dominions, they do not enjoy the privileges of nobility, nor are they admitted to secular offices, honors, and dignities, neither to the succession of noble fiefs or states, which also would seem much more indecent and foreign from the dignity of the apostolic see, 
if one's legitimate, through a subsequent marriage of this sort, as it is preferred to think about them, were taken as legitimized, for cardinals and the excellence and splendor of the cardinalship, which had compared to a regal dignity, would be able to be easily degraded, stained, or in some way obscured. Therefore, so that pure births may respond to the pure dignity, we declare and decree that whomsoever sons illegitimately born of whatsoever participates, even of great ones, even of those shining by ducal or mayoral, even by regal and imperial authority, endowed at whatsoever level and dignity and preeminence, even ones begotten from an unbound man and unbound woman, between whom a marriage then was able to occur, and afterwards through a subsequent matrimony, even rightly and solemnly contracted in front of the church, or legitimized otherwise, and rehabilitated howsoever you please, and restored to their birthrights, and affected capable of whatsoever goods, even if with them, so that they may be able to obtain this very dignity, regarding the defect of their births, if or expressly in an appearance dispensed by an apostolic authority, howsoever it may occur, nevertheless we declare and decree them of the dignity of the aforesaid cardinalship, utterly incapable, and, perpet and perpetually unsuitable for obtaining it. But also, in addition, we prohibit, lest they should ever at any time be taken as cardinals, whom, because of defects, vices, or impediments of any sort, it is not right, according to canonical sanctions, to be promoted to the holy orders. Even if, with these things, if it were dispensed by the aforesaid apostolic authority, or neither sprinkled with the reputation of any crime or infamy. Requisite Virtues Another thing, so that not only honorarily, but even in very reality they may be cardinals, hinges upon whom the doors of the universal church securely rest, and so that divine and human mysteries committed to them may be more usefully carried out, we establish that the choicest and most excelling men should be ascribed into the same college, of whom there are known and tested these qualities, their honesty of life and the candor of morals, and ready teaching and education, and incredible piety, an ardent endeavor, and zeal for the salvation of souls, and sincere faith, and counsels to be given, and integrity and singular prudence in matters to be undertaken, and constancy, and authority, and other qualities required by right, as much for the very Pope as for the Universal College. Office Climbers And moving on, lest men clearly rough and unskilled in sacred things, and unaware of ecclesiastical functions, like guests and travelers in the house of God, should suddenly be perfected to an office of such sort, according to the decree sanctioned long ago by us in our aforesaid a consistory, which equally we innovated from the series of these things, we strictly interdict, lest any one should be able to be assumed, in any respect whatever, to the honor of the cardinalship, except he who will have been born a clerical tonsure, having been previously marked with clerical character, and been constituted in the four minor orders, possessed for at least a year." Parents. But whereas the ones to be promoted to an honor so greatly sublime ought to be exceedingly eminent beyond others in every virtue, and especially in the praise of their chastity, he who at another time is recognized to have received sons, even legitimate ones, from his wife may be unable to provide pure testimony of his continence. And a father is born toward his sons by natural affection, by a certain too great propensity, let it be worried lest, on account of these things, distracted by the various businesses of his own house, and by the complex care of children, he should either negligently treat the business of the church entrusted to him, or less solicitously and faithfully than what is equal to the job, so that the rights of the same church may be safeguarded. We prohibit lest any one who may have a child, or children of either sex, even receive from a legitimate marriage, or nephew, or nephews from them, shall be able to be promoted or assumed in any respect whatsoever into a cardinal. Moreover, so that we may amputate any stimulus to factions and the opportunities of rivalries, out of this holy gathering, as much as in the Lord we are able, approving the decree of our predecessor of holy memory, Pope Julius III published upon the topic of one such holy consistory, and declaring similarly, we perpetually interdict, lest at any time after this there should be taken for a cardinal of the same Holy Roman Catholic Church, someone who may exist as a blood brother on either side, from either parent in the matter, of some other living cardinal, thus so that at the same time two blood brothers in the same college may not ever be able to occur in any respect whatever. Furthermore, extending the same decree and amplifying it, we prohibit also lest with any living cousin, whether of a paternal brother, paternal sister, or maternal sibling, another cousin, 
whether of a paternal brother, paternal sister, or maternal sibling, of him may be able to be promoted to the cardinalship. Nepotism. But by any equal reason we sanction, lest there should be able to be assumed into a cardinal, a nephew, with a cardinal paternal relative or uncle, living of either his brother or sister, nor again conversely, the fatherly relative or uncle, with a cardinal nephew existing of that man, from either his brother or sister, nor finally any other man, who by so much as the first or second grade of foreign consanguinity may be conjoined to a living cardinal, as long as he may yet have been alive. Thus it is that all those individually aforesaid, so much a father having sons or nephews as blood brothers, paternal cousins, maternal cousins, a paternal relative and uncle, or a nephew by a brother or sister, and whosoever as stated above may be conjoined at the first or second grade with another corresponding cardinal living, let them all be deemed unsuitable for the cardinalship, and thus incapable of it. Neither let any one out of them be able to be created a cardinal. Neither against this prohibition, even for whatsoever even most urgent cause, let it be permitted to be dispensed with, and no less let the election, creation, and pronouncement of cardinals in this manner against the present prohibition or interdict, by that very thing be null, bankrupt, and void, whether made or just attempted. With all these things followed, then let it be of no help or importance. Requisite Visit to the Holy See Finally, noticing that it is the proper office of those same cardinals to assist, as earlier stated, to the vicar of Christ in the lands, and to render counsel and assiduous labor to him in regard to ruling the Catholic Church, and with that to foresee for the necessities of the church, and that the same things are to be held, so much from the duty unto it, by the nature of the very office, as much out of the decrees of the Holy Fathers, that on account of these things it is absurd that cardinals should live their life far off from the Roman pontiff, and neglect and desert their so greatly exultant place and dwelling in the church of God, against the duty of an office of the sort, and un unto destruction of their souls, Adhering to the recent decree, similarly promulgated by us in our consistory, about the counsel of the same brothers, we establish and ordain, lest anyone in the hereafter, being absent from the Roman Curia, should be created or pronounced a cardinal, except with this additional condition, that he shall be bound within a year to come unto the Roman Curia, and to make a visit to the threshold of the apostles, and no less before the red beretta, which by custom is to be blessed by the Roman pontiff, and through a certain announcement is accustomed to be sent, may be handed over to him, or may be placed upon his head, and let him vow in the hands of the, of the same person constitu constituted an ecclesiastical dignity, to whom that job will have been given, that he himself is going to personally come, within a year from the day of the rendered oath, counting with every delay postponed and with every impediment removed, to the city, or elsewhere, where the Roman Curia at that time will have been, so that he may stand himself before us, or to the Roman pontiff of that existing time, and to this holy apostolic see, in whose services he will have been enrolled, and may apply himself to his office, for as long as he will have been present to the same pontiff. And thus he may be fully instructed about laws, customs, practices, about the whole state of the same see, and under the churches, or his own perhaps personally ruled provinces, needs to be upheld, abuses to be removed, customs to be reformed, and ecclesiastical discipline to be restored, if on any side it may have slipped, he may receive opportune and salutary counsels from the paternal charity and wisdom and vigilance of the same pontiff, and so that for his efforts before men he may carry them out. Of this indeed oath after he will have rendered it, let a public document of it then be created, and in an authentic form. Let it be transmitted to us, or to our successor at that time, without delay. For if by chance he will have refused to swear it, then we may want that the red beretta may be completely denied to him, and that it may be handed over not at all. But by that very deed, without any declaration or decree, he may exist deprived from the honor of the cardinalship, and may be held in all things and through all things, as if he had never been promoted or taken for a cardinal. Let them be affected, also unsuitable for obtaining that dignity, afterwards and incapable of it. But if, however, he shall swear and shall receive the red beretta, but however afterwards to the city and Roman Curia, as it is preferred, within a year from the day of the rendered oath, he shall not have appeared then equally by that very thing without any declaration. He shall be perpetually deprived and lack from the dignity, office, title, class, and from all things, and from whatsoever insignias, 
faculties, privileges, or authorities of the same cardinalship, and shall be so thought of from then on, as if he had never been co-chosen among the cardinals, and neither had received the red beretta. Indeed, let him be held to immediately and completely dispense with the beretta after that time. Enforcement. We are decreeing thus in all the individual for foregoing things, through whomsoever judges and commit commissaries, and even auditors of the cases of the apostolic palace, and through the same cardinals of the Holy Roman Catholic Church, and whatsoever case and instances having arisen unto them, that thus they ought to judge and define, and this by whatsoever faculty and authority of judging and interpreting differently, belonging to each and every one of them, and additionally, that anything else besides against these decrees is attempted bankruptly and voidedly, whether it may have happened knowingly or ignorantly, and by whomever and by whatever authority. Supremacy. Notwithstanding the published apostolic constitutions and ordinances of the general ecumenical councils, even prescribing a certain other number of the same cardinals, or treating otherwise than in the foregoing decrees, these all to whatever degree they may militate in some way against the present constitution. Yet once having the senses of those things for fully and sufficiently expressed, we completely abrogate, abolish, and annul all other contrary things whatsoever, even with regard to those things a special, specific, express, and individual mention would have to be made, about one word or another, but not in general clauses, suggesting the same as our decrees. Promulgation of copies. Another thing, as the present letters become known to all, we command that those be published in the accustomed way, and affixed therein, to the doors of the Lateran and of the basilicas of the Prince of the Apostles round about the city, and of the Apostolic Chancel, and in front of the Campe Flore, and through some space of time to be displayed, and with them having been taken down, that the examples of them to be left in the archive of that same place. And we wish that, from the translations and copies of those, once written down by the hand of some notary public, and ratified by the seal of a prelate or person constituted in ecclesiastic, ecclesiastical dignity, that both in a judgment and outside of it, where there will have been need, that the same indeed faith, respect, may be applied to them, which would be applied to the very originals, if they were going to be exhibited and displayed. Admonitions. Therefore, no, to no man is it permitted this page to, etc. But if anyone will have presumed to attempt this, he will incur the indignation of the Almighty God and of the Blesseds, etc. Interjecting here with the bit from the other encyclical. Using the similar section from the encyclical, quo primum, it should read in full, Accordingly, no one whosoever is permitted to infringe or rashly contravene this notice of our permission, statute, ordinance, command, direction, grant, indult, declaration, will, decree, and prohibition. Should any person venture to do so, let him understand that he will incur the wrath of Almighty God and of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul. Given at Rome, near St. Peter, in the 1586th year of the Incarnation of the Lord, the third day before the Nones of December, in the second year of our pontificate, signed Sixtus V, Bishop of the Catholic Church, and numerous other Cardinal Archbishops. <laughs>